All right, so we may not have the dot view case, but at least we've got the 1M8. This next gen version of the HTC One, there's two of them now, promises to continue HTC's no compromise policy when it comes to their flagship phone. While it's not revolutionary, it's not like a groundbreaking improvement in Android phone manufacturing quality like the original one was, it is a very tidy evolutionary step for the Taiwanese phone manufacturer. So the original one, the M7, was an ambitious phone. Actually, HTC basically put all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. If the one failed, their CEO came out and said, look, we're, we're pretty much done with the smartphone market. With the success of the M7, they went ahead with the M8 trying to recapture that success. The M8 really had a rough time keeping uh, things under wraps. It's been leaked pretty thoroughly, but since the M7 was such a success and such a hot topic, no wonder everyone wanted to leak it. We haven't seen this level of leaks and interest on an Android device before, only iPhones have been more leaked than the HTC One M8, which is a dubious honor, I suppose. The new version is slightly taller and slightly wider than last year's model. Now it is a 5-inch 1080p IPS display versus 4.7 inches on the old one. The thickness is about the same. The all-metal chassis is back, now with more metal. HTC says now it is 90% metal compared to 70%, probably a lot having to do with the comp opposite ring around the outside being replaced by a single piece of aluminum that wraps all the way around the back to the sides. This makes it a little bit heavier too at 160 grams compared to 143 on the M7. The surface itself is a bit smoother than the M7 with a brushed effect that's actually quite subtle and pleasing and it's available in three colors, gunmetal gray, which is what we have here, glacial silver, and amber gold because iPhone can't be the only gold phone around because Apple releases a gold phone, everyone needs a gold phone. There are no more capacitive permanent buttons at the bottom, so it's more like uh, Nexus series. Actually, a lot of Android phones have been moving in this direction with software-based buttons that are contextual and allow you to have them, you know, pop up or reorient themselves as needed. I personally like having the extra screen real estate of the off-screen buttons, especially if you're going to have the black strip at the bottom of the phone, which HTC informs me is not there for no reason, but is actually for phone balance, and there are like components back there and stuff. So I like having the extra screen real estate, but I also really like having the buttons change contextually and be possible to update with future versions of Android as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, and it comes down to what you prefer. The dual front-facing speakers are back, this time called Boom Sound. Just like last time's boom sound, except unlike last time. No. Okay, no one listens to Simple Plan anymore, but unlike last generation, the boom sound does not distort at all at even maximum volume and is louder. Internally, the specs have been bumped in pretty much every way. So it's got a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 801 CPU, an Adreno 330 GPU, two gigs of LPDDR3 RAM, an internal 16 or 32 gig storage, uh, device as well as a micro SD slot for expansion. This is a big improvement. This is one of the big complaints that I had about the original one is no micro SD expansion to just throw stuff that doesn't need to be high speed like, you know, music and movies and stuff. It has everywhere from 2G to 4G LTE support and the rear camera is the same 4 megapixel affair with the front bumping up to 5 megapixels, but Okay, it also has two cameras on the rear, so more on the funky dual camera setup later. It has a 2600 milliamp hour battery, they're claiming 20 hours of talk time, so it's a little bit higher than the old one, and runs Android 4.4 with Sense 6, which hasn't changed nearly as much as Sense 5 did over Sense 4, so once again, evolutionary changes. Speaking of evolutionary changes, Nano SIM. Okay. I get it. I understand. We're moving towards nano SIM. HTC One M8 has nano SIM. Okay, got it. Why did we ever need any other standard of SIM? The contact points are all in the same place that they have been since the original. Why did we need the plastic? It never did anything. Why did mini or micro SIM ever exist? Anyway, and if we're, and if nano's as low as we're going, then stop changing it.
Okay, so the main feature that's different is the dual rear cameras. The idea is that the primary camera is the same. You got your ultra pixels for good low light performance and all that. And the secondary camera is simply a clone of the new front facing camera. The primary has, however, dropped off optical image stabilization. So this will affect video capture quality in theory. Uh, the video resolution is about the same at 1080p, so there's no 4K, but you do get 60 FPS or 120 FPS at 720p. However, images are a whole new thing with the dual cameras. So images captured in dual cam mode are about 60% larger than those with the rear sensor alone. The extra file size is 40% extra photo data and 60% depth information. This depth is used for post-processing effects. And while this isn't a Lytro, it is pretty neat and it actually works reasonably well. U-Focus allows you to change the part of the scene in focus. You can't pick any focus point in the scene, but you can toggle between the primary and secondary camera's focal points and then blur out the rest with a simulated like depth of field look. The backgrounds are blurred or and the subject is left in focus or the other way around. Theoretically you could even cut out your subject in Photoshop and do the same thing but this is much faster it can be done right on the phone and the effect is you know if you're just like Instagramming or whatever actually pretty good. I, I Instagrammed a picture that I took on the M8 and people were like whoa the camera looks so good and the thing to bear in mind about it is it's like just it's just a four megapixel camera, but because I was able to do those effects with the built-in photo, you know, well, basically it's like Instagram on steroids because you can do things like the, the blurring, um, it makes it look really sharp. This is really the coolest thing though, guys, and there are a couple of others, but what I'm really excited about is the third-party apps that might leverage this dual camera setup to its maximum potential. Now I haven't had as much time to play around with the phone as I'd like, so this isn't a full review by any stretch, but we can cover some of the basics of the Sense UI, which um, I actually quite like. Maybe it's because my first Android experience was on the HTC One, so I'm quite familiar with Sense, but I don't find pure Google better than Sense or the other way around, not really. Um, so anyway, Blink Feed is back, so you got your home screen updates with news, sports, etc., and your calendar appears at the top of it and all that. You've also got intelligent remote control of your TV with the Sense TV with channel guide and program suggestions application. Gesture control is supported by the phone, so you can do a few different things. You unlock your phone with a swipe, you can double touch to, to unlock, you can, you can lift your phone up to eye level and then uh, press the volume button in order to launch the camera app, just like that. You can flip it over to mute it, uh, so no more fumbling with the volume rocker or power buttons. There's hands-free calling with voice commands. It should be noted though that the voice commands are not like uh, okay Google voice commands. They have their own kind of thing. Um, and that pretty much does it, I guess, for this overview of the HTC One M8. Thank you for watching, guys. I would love to hear your comments below because let's face it, if you're a phone guy, you've been following this phone since before it was out because all the information was out there. Is the One M8 enough to make you switch? Are you going to use a flagship from another brand? Maybe tell us, what phone are you using now and what's your next planned upgrade? Even if you only vaguely know what your next upgrade is, like I'm going to wait for the you know next evolution in the One series or I'm going to wait for the next big Samsung phone or whatever else. I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.